In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Pottstown, the very small city or town of Pottstown, Pennsylvania. And a quick look at the population of the demographics reveals a modern day population of 23,000, 13,000 at the turn of the century. And if we go back down through the decades, you don't have a lot of people living in this area. And we're going to be taking a look at some of uh, the old world structures that remain, some that don't remain. We are in the coal mining region of Pennsylvania. This is interesting. Let's take a look at these street light uh, pillars here, looking like little towers. And right away we get into some of the old world style structures we're used to seeing. And I think it's helpful to look at some of the smaller communities to try to uh, wrap our heads around the logistics that would have been would have had to have been involved to construct a lot of these um, these buildings and infrastructure. This is a uh, penitentiary we'll be taking a closer look at as we move forward. And there's a nice modern day view of the armory with this wonderful red brick infrastructure and crenellations, castle-like crenellations along the top. Again, many of these going back to a time when the population would have been would have been said to have been around 10,000 people. And this area of the state's very rich in old world architecture and infrastructure. Here we have the interior of the bank. Just to give you an idea of the splendor. And not far from Pottsville. Uh, is a an interesting feature, archaeological, mm, geographical, sorry, feature um, known as Boxcar Rocks. Let's take a look at it on the Google Earth. And here we can see Boxcar Rocks. And as we zoom in, you can see the ridge line running through here. And you can actually see a, a series of ridges. And as we zoom out, those ridges sort of become. Uh, are amplified and we can actually follow them right down um, west, southwest through the states. But let's look at this boxcar rocks. So I have followed some of that formation but uh, and found some interesting anomalies but this is certainly what I would consider to be um, why don't they call it boxcar wall? I'm not sure. This, it really looks like a um, what we might consider a megalithic wall or something like that. Of course, uh, history telling us that uh, this is a natural formation. And you can see as we zoom in, there's quite a bit of pebbling going on, almost like it's like a, a, a concrete of some sort, not looking very natural. And, and if all of these sort of finger um, formations uh, have this type of... Uh, geology it certainly makes you wonder about uh, what we're actually looking at what, what we're walking on there's a good view of the boxcar rocks from above and that that again that uh, line that ridge ridge line that I showed you on the Google Maps would follow all the way through here and there'd be another one over there and the view from above you can see it running through here certainly worth a deeper investigation and I did follow that formation a little bit further south and it did find some interesting uh, structures and anomalies as well so it's it's definitely worth a closer look but I wanted to feature that in this video as it's uh, so close to uh, Pottstown but let's move back into the architecture getting into the brewery the youngling and son brewery as it was and here it is as it still stands today as they're still making uh, beer it's very interesting you can see a shortened door here as compared to this door it certainly makes you wonder about uh, the surrounding area a look at some of the early brewers the brewery folk I suppose you could say And then this also attached to the brewery. I'm sure there's all sorts of uh, tunnels 
in the area. Of course, you have the coal mining narrative, so the tunnels explained through that as well. Not to say that that wasn't going on. Another look across the street from the building we just looked at. And then we get a Presbyterian church. Everything's stone, right? Remember, not a lot of people living here, um, especially going back into the early 1800s. And they'll tell us most of these were built in the late 1800s, early 1900s, as, as we are often told with uh, anywhere in North America, really. This is the Capitol Theater. Of course, a pale shadow of what it once was in this form. But here you're getting a bit of an idea of what uh, the interior was adorned with. Looking like a lobby area. Very detailed ceiling work. So this stuff has sort of become expected in uh, small town America. But the explanation was never really there for why this is expected. And I think again we're, uh, we're peering into a previous civilization and uh, we've inherited much of the infrastructure and architecture. And that's just my take on it. Very interesting. Garfield Square, we have two churches side by side, Second like Presbyterian, English, English Lutheran. Uh, and this part of the states as well, um, you'll see a lot of these mega industrial mills, these brick structures with the massive stacks. Some of these are enormous uh, um, structures uh, and what I contend are most likely have been re refitted or a part of the old world. Um, used for the uh, the new world that we find ourselves in today. Things like this are what really jump out, you know, why why are they building high schools like this? Again, we have a very small population and you have to think of timelines, you have to think of uh, practicality when building this type of structure um, to house children to learn, or adolescents I suppose. It, again, it feels more like this was not built for that purpose, but in fact um, was previously there and had to be repurposed into something, so they chose to make it a high school. And all the different denominations and, and so many of these towns and cities um, present and uh, very, very well-built structures, very very uh, strong, solid structures with the stone. You can see the stonework in this one. You have a cymatic window up front here, and of course you always have a tower. So here we have the courthouse, the jail in the background, which we saw and we'll be taking a look at. So this is a two-year build on this uh, this courthouse. And I have to be honest now with my research, I've seen dozens of courthouses with that same time timeline of build date, early uh, 1890s. Certainly makes you scratch your head. If all these, if all these were going up at the time that they, they said they were going up, um, it would have looked like a construction zone all, all across the country. But we don't see much evidence of that. But we are left with this type of uh, architecture which is very difficult to wrap your head around even how it was achieved and there's a reason we don't do it today beautiful structure though we have interesting we have an anomaly here too we have a date on the building of 1889 obviously not original and then I have an explanation here um, that says it was built in 1889 and finished in 1891. Um, that's from one website. And then we have another explanation that says it was built in 1891 to 1892. So, contradictory, which we often find with this research. Which begs the question, is it contradictory because people just don't know, or are we having sort of stories that haven't been corroborated? 
and we're digging into it and finding these uh, these uh, inconsistencies and finding that there's a misdirection going on here. We have a multi-story bank trust building here. A small town multi-story building is, a, is quite the feat. And now we have a grammar school, much like the uh, high school we saw earlier, not looking like your typical or what you would expect, I suppose. Still stands to this day. Wonderful looking structure. And uh, there's a curious monument, the Henry Clay Monument. Henry Clay, a figure, um, he ran for president several times, apparently unsuccessfully. There's the monument, monument overlooking the town. So you can see some interesting architecture here in the residential area. Here, remnants of the old world. There's the gentleman himself. We'll move on to the high school. Very large structure, not looking too detailed, though you do have a bit of a, uh, a tower here. But it still stands to this day. Here's what it looks like. We take a closer look at the brickwork, just to give you a sense of how ornate that is. Pretty incredible brickwork, really. Think about it. They'll tell us this was built in the early 1900s. Um, I just, I just don't see it. I don't see how all of this was going up so quickly. Um, and these places were booming so quickly. What of an absolute chaos. Everywhere you look, there's uh, exponential growth in population and exponential growth in architecture. Um, but very well laid out and planned looking places. So those are contradictory uh, phenomena, I would suggest. And if you know anything more about the region, please uh, feel free to share um, in the comment section. This uh, this location, I'd never heard of Pottstown before. This was brought to my attention by a viewer. So I'm going to make a more of an effort to try and focus in on some of these smaller cities. And I'm certainly going to take uh, viewer recommendations if you think there's, you know of a town that uh, has a lot of what we would consider to be old world gems. A lot of stone rock wall, stone base rock wall, brickwork, ornate detailing. Um, by all means, send it my way. This is the Nachaco Allen Hotel. Quite a large structure again for such a small city. You can see the brickwork as we zoom in. The bricks and we have the arches. Well, they're not spectacular on the outside. Still a, a nice looking hotel for such a small, small town. All right, now we're looking at um, bits and pieces of the, the state penitentiary there. Well, they're calling it the jail, so I might have that wrong as a state penitentiary. But it's definitely heavily fortified. And again, having that old, um, almost megalithic style stonework here. Or block work, I should say. Could be polymer, I'm not sure. A view on the roof. As far as uh, jails go, I think it's it's a nicer looking one, that's for sure. And then a public library that's ticking all the boxes. All right, we come to uh, a very obscure structure. This is the old Miner's Journal building. That's supposedly what it looked like. You see the uh, horse-drawn streetcar there in front. There's the monument. It, it really makes you wonder, right? Because I have this and then I have another version of the Miner's Journal. They're calling it the new Miner's Journal. So I assume there's a renovation from this state to this state here. But both are spectacular. And I know they're drawings, but uh, what are they portraying here with this type of drawing? How magnificent really is the uh, is the architecture? Looking like something, again, out of a fairy tale book, but 
we are told, once existed, but no longer. Well, what do you think? Does it make sense for all these small locations to have all this type of uh, infrastructure? Are you are you into the old world? Do you think that there's more than meets the eye to our, our historical narrative? This is also a school. These are interesting up top too, look like flappers, some sort of air exchange going on there. Here's a little bird's eye of, of uh, they're calling it Pottsville, I think it's called Pottstown now. And a Presbyterian church in the modern day. It's a beautiful architecture. Not many people living here. Again, modern day, just over 20,000. Turn of the century, about 10,000. Uh, you see the brick streets here as well, the safe deposit bank. So, what do you make of Pottstown, Pennsylvania? I'd like to see it in the comments. Thanks for watching.